Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show sponsored by Arnold Clark and Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Charlie, Adam and Tam McManus are here with me today on the show. Delighted to have your company as well. Hit the follow button on our Facebook page. You can share it with your friends. And also, if you're on our YouTube channel, then you can hit the subscribe button there as well. We're on Twitter at PLZ Soccer. Great to have your company. I don't know about you, Tam, but uh, certainly this ability to get a haircut has just it just makes you feel 10 times better you know it makes you feel as if you can go somewhere even a low time as you know we can't go anywhere ah, you're, looking, you're looking well Peter. A, a, a few people were commenting on it on monday i heard yeah yeah well i thought some people thought i dyed my hair tam but uh, i'm just going to grow uh, old gracefully um roughly i people all, you... also thought i had botox <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I know, Ruffy. You you occasionally dye your hair anyway because you've always liked that blonde lock from the early days. Is that fair? Yeah. I, I usually rely on holidays, you know, to lighten my hair, but that's not going to happen oh, yeah. either, is it? So I'll have to get the wee dye out and then see what happens there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there you are. Well, my heart bleeds for Ruffy. Charlie he likes four holidays a year. <laughs> Just... uh, so it's not not bad for some, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Four holidays a year. Um, hi to Kathleen Madden, Stuart Rankin, uh, so many others joining us across uh, our YouTube. Uh, Colin Craig and uh, Rick Stark. Great name, Rick. You should be in a band, uh, to be honest with you. Um, and also Stuart Ramsey, who joins us all the time from the West Midlands. Thank you, Stuart, for your support. There's so many others. It would take me probably the entire show. Uh, Trevor Kane is in Port Rush. Um, Craig Barber says, when you're getting the haircut finished, and I'm happy to take that, Craig. Um, unfortunately, Craig, you don't realise I come from a huge family and you could hit me with a baseball bat and you would not offend me. It's as simple as that, as Ruffy well knows. Huge families, you don't get offended in it. Um, lots to talk about. Of course, the other thing is, I said we've got nowhere to go. Charlie, we might have somewhere to go because Nicola Sturgeon has given us a, a strong hint that maybe 15,000 fans could get in to watch Scotland play at the Euros. Yeah, there must. she must be up for an election soon. She's trying to get back on everybody's <laughs> side. Um, so, uh, listen, I think if, if, that, if that is possible, then, you know, I think it'd be incredible, you know, 15,000, the Tartan Army in there. It's been a long time and, you know, I think these players deserve an opportunity to play in front of some supporters um, because it's a wonderful achievement. It's been so long and and if it is 15,000, then hopefully us four are part of it. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you 100%, oh, Charlie. I mean, there's nothing... I mean, honestly, I mean, I know you're, you're being optimistic about it, Charlie, but would would you really like, uh, you know, a whole weekend of the build-up to the Czech Republic and Tam's company and Ruffy's company, you know, we're all outside Hamden enjoying ourselves and then and then the big stay over as well. Would you get away with that? Would you get a get-out-of-jail card? Oh, absolutely. I'll be there. Don't worry about that. It's just... Um... Just getting in the ground is going to be the issue, isn't it? We just need to make sure that we <laughs> just make sure we get in that ground because, you no, know, let's say I just think it'll be amazing just to be part of a, a major tournament as a as a supporter to be able to see what it's like. I've never been to a major football tournament, so uh, it'd be great to be part of it, and um, you know, to be part of that fifteen thousand would be would be incredible for the whole country. And strangely enough, um, Tam, you know, as Ruffy and, and myself have covered more than a few games across uh, Europe and for Scotland and with Celtic and Rangers in European competition, you started to you take it all for granted. And now in this last year, you've started to realise the simple things in life you miss about the game. Oh, definitely. I mean, listen, there's a whole generation of Scottish people uh, grown up and never seen Scotland in an international tournament. And, uh, you know, obviously this season it's COVID and we're going to not get a full house in the games. But still, you know, for, for a younger generation to see Scotland at a major tournament is going to be fantastic. And I think the last one was, what, 98? I think I was only about 17 years old. So, like, 23 years ago, it's been it's been a long, long time and we're all bursting to see Scotland and hopefully doing well. So, hopefully we can get a wee party as well and a van outside. 
Yeah, absolutely, you're right. Well, Tam, you're absolutely right, because as Charlie is not really aware of, Ruffy, uh, I mean, um, with his, with um, Davy Moyes and Charlie's agent, Kenny, um, we were all pals and we went to Euro 96 together um, and we also were at um, the World Cup in Italy in 1990 in an old battered red Audi. Uh, what a time we had then. Davy wasn't on the money he's on now, let me tell you. <laughs> but we're all, we were all there. Uh, you know, we, I can remember Ruffy getting tickets for, from the Azerbaijan FA, but we didn't mind we were in or we following Scotland. Yeah, that's, that's going to be the big problem, obviously, you know, who's going to get in, you know, uh, and there'll be a criteria. Uh, I'm a wee bit sure, if you're in the Hall of Fame, time. you get in. No, no, I'm talking about you, because you, you know, you've, you've, not even, you've not even had a vaccination yet, so you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you're, you're, you're on the flums. <laughs> you better go on that 40 someday, get, I need that, that jag. But, yeah, uh, I'm taking no, care of my it's wife. Going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be great, you know, to get in there. You know, I've already asked for my two uh, VIP tickets, so I'll have uh, a slot for somebody if uh, we can't get any more tickets. Uh, so, no, it's going to be a great, great time. I feel sorry for the players because the players would want to be, first of all, the players wouldn't want to be playing the Euros at Hamden. You'd want to be playing them somewhere else, but you, you'll take it as there and you'll enjoy it. But uh, it, unfortunately, as we all know, it's not going to be the same as a full house, uh, but uh, it's a start, and that's the main thing. Oh, so it'll Ruffy, will make some amount of noise. So you're getting yes. you're getting two you're getting two for the Hall of Fame. I'm going to try and get one because I got twenty six caps. That's three tickets. We just need to get find one more, and we're there, lads. We're there. Yep. Well, I'll phone Moisey and see if we can get two tickets from the Azerbaijan FA, and then he, he better have, he better have <laughs> sign a contract. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, listen, he, if he doesn't sign a contract, Tom, you're out. He's our next pundit. <laughs> and Mc, McManus, I'm going to get banned again. McManus, <laughs> McManus will be doing it at the NHS of order, chopping the door. <laughs> <laughs> <on a jag. laughs> anyway, listen, Tom, you're in. You're in because I know Hibs TV won't be covering it. Um, anyway, um, apart from anything else, Nicola is optimistic about the whole thing. Um, the First Minister says a good number of fans will be able to attend the Hamden Ties. And let's be honest about it, you know, the Tartan Army, 15,000 of them will make the noise of possibly 52,000. Here's hoping one man that I do hope will be there, uh, Charlie, is Kieran Tierney. It's six weeks. It's, uh, you know, knee ligament damage doesn't need an operation, which is a bonus. Now, really, it's a race against time for a guy who's been Scotland's one of Scotland's best players in the last uh, month or two. Yeah, he'll be fine. You know, he's, there's plenty of time, Peter. Um, I just think that, you know, that's worst case scenario will be six weeks, best case four, four weeks. So, you know, there's plenty of time for him. He's a fit lad. Um, you know, he'll just be trying to get his rehab done properly. It's a blow for, for Arsenal um, because, like you say, he's been... They're probably best player as well, and you know for Scotland he he should be okay for the you know the warm up games as well. So if he can get fit and be ready for Arsenal indices, maybe nick a couple of games. Um, if not, you know he'll be ready for the Euros. I don't have any doubt about that. So um, yeah, it's a blow for everybody and him especially because he'd want to be playing well going into Euros. But no, he's a, he's a guaranteed lad that'll be in that squad. Yeah, he, he's one of the. I saw um, some stats, Ruffy, saying, you know, Arsenal do okay when Tierney's not in the side. Um, and I thought to myself, wow, how to in some way construct a case against them uh, when he's in that side? They look a different team altogether. In fact, I would, I would go as far as to say the reason why Arsenal haven't been able to push for the Champions League spot is quite simply because they don't have enough Kieran Tierney's in their team. Tierney could have sat in that Invincibles team at Arsenal. No problem. That's how good he is. Yeah, and I mean, I, I'm still sticking to my guns. I don't think back three uh, is his best position. I still prefer him uh, tearing down that uh, wing and firing quality balls in there. And I think he does that better from a forward position. But if that's where the teams think that uh, they're going to get the best out of them just now, then then they'll take that. You know, but I just think you're you're. You're, you're losing a lot of his strengths, you know, playing back there. I know we saw him overlapping in the Scotland game, which was fantastic to see somebody for the 
a centre half position, you know, coming and tearing through down to their eighteen yard line. But uh, I, I do think uh, he's maturing a lot more now, and I think you get better, better at him in a forward position. Yeah, absolutely. Fingers crossed he's all okay, as Charlie says there. Um, of course, quite a few people always like to give you pelters, Charlie. I don't know what it is about you. Tam used to be the man who's getting it, but they've, they've, they've kind of a turned their anger on you at the moment. Um, Jim Eccleson's not happy with you. thought you were disrespectful to St. Johnston. Um, and Art says, Charlie, what happened with the penalty the other night there? What happened with the penalty? We couldn't believe it. You stepped up, you were confident, you picked your spot just a wee bit too near him maybe. Yeah, too near them, but, you know, I'm getting a bit of dog's abuse because St. Johnston fans don't, it's not a derby, you know, it's 25 <laughs> miles away. And, you know, if that's what they're worried about, that we, we're a derby against them, they've got to worry. Um, listen, I think they'd have to be worried if we got into Premier League because we battered them for 70 minutes. So that's, that's mm -hmm. all I have to say. Yeah, I missed a penalty and that's part of the game. But if there's another one, I'll step up. You know, you take it on the chin and... Um, I would be if I was in Johnson. I'd be worried for for how they played yeah. against us. Yeah, you, hey, you're a good. You, yeah, Tom. The silver lining is I had St. Johnson in the coupon. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. No Alexander, loyalty. No, no loyalty on I this said, show whatsoever. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know whether Charlie would agree with me. I've already said after our Dundee United game, it, it just shows you how poor the Premiership is when teams There's like them. No, there's, uh, not. there's not much. It's amazing, you know, that uh, they're there. They've got good players, but at the end of the day, maybe one-off games it makes a difference. But it's really poor, very poor. Well, uh, oh, it's gentle. I, see, I seen some of their players should linked extend with the league. I seen some of their players linked for Scotland. If, the, if that was on the show and what I've got, then Scotland's in a bad way. Yeah. That's that's how that's how bad I thought St Johnson were compared mm. to. What everybody said, yeah, they've won a cup and they finished sixth, but there's no much difference between the top three, four teams in the championship to what the rest of the Premier League. Yeah, Hearts, Ebbs, you know, Aberdeen are above everybody else in Celtic, but the rest, there's no much difference. And like Ruffy said, I think, you know, on a consistent basis, I think these teams in the championship, you know, would challenge them. And that's why I think the league should be extended because it would make it a better, stronger Premier League. Yeah, I agree with you 100%, Charlie. I've been banging that drum uh, for long enough, but it's fallen on deaf ears just basically because they don't want to um, put something together that reflects the feelings of the nation. They just want greed uh, to drive it all. Um, listen, there's a statement just come out, as ever on this programme. We love a statement out, Tam, don't we? Um, here's a statement from the uh, SFA. Following extensive consultation with the Scottish Government and public health advisors, the local organising structure can confirm that it has submitted details of its preferred option for admitting spectators to the stadium to meet today's 7th of April UEFA deadline. We are delighted that the government has given approval to allow spectators up to about 25% of the stadium capacity, which is approximately 12,000, um, based on UEFA Euro 2020 venue overlay and seating configuration. Um, so that's about 12,000 for each of the four games to be staged at Hamden Park. Naturally, this will be subject to continued progress with reducing the prevalence of the virus and the rollout of the vaccination programme. A decision on the fan zone in the city will be made at the end of April. On the 9th of April, UEFA will be in contact with all ticket holders advising them on the latest tournament arrangements, including ticketing and travel information. So, a bit of good news there, just confirmation of what we were discussing earlier on. Um, yeah, I was about to say to you, Charlie, good result for you last night. Suddenly, you boys, from that position of, I was wondering maybe a couple of months ago of what, what was happening at Dens Park, suddenly you are right in the mix. Yeah, no, the lads are lads have been a good run of form. Um, you know, we sort of, we owed United, they've gave us a bit of two, two going overs um, at home and earlier in the season, done it at the at air. So it was a good result last night for us, 3-0. Um, so that puts us in the mix and, um, you know, I think it gives us five games to go to, to get a chance of getting into that second place, still to play Wraith, still to play Dunfermline, who are behind us. Um, so it gives us a good chance and also Inverness, who they're behind as well. So it's going to be a, an exciting few weeks to go and, you know, we, we look to try and get second place and, you know, we'll see what happens at the end of the season. 
Yeah, that playoff place, Tam, is looking great. I mean, Inverness had a, a good result last night. Neil McCann's certainly mm -hmm. keeping their uh, roadshow rolling along. Yep, six games in a row, I think they've won. You know, they came from nowhere. I thought Inverness had no chance to get into the playoffs, but you've got to give Neil McCann credit. Slow start when he went in, but six wins in a row. You know, great result last night uh, down at Morton and, you know, flying. So I think they've got a real chance to get in the top four as well. I think Dunfermline looks as if they're the one that's going to be vulnerable. Uh, they're, they're in a poor run at the minute, but you still wouldn't write them off uh, getting in there. So it's, it's, it's a good race. It's interesting. And I think it's all about trying to get second place, as Charlie said, because you've got two or less games. You know, you can let the third and fourth players kind of cut each other's throat and then try and pick your pieces up and then give yourself a good crack at the at the Premier League team. So hopefully Dundee can get that second place. Yep, OK. Um, Charlie, would you fancy your chances when you consider what's at the bottom end of the Premier League? Yeah, definitely. I think if you if you look at... On, on, listen, we've got to turn up. We've got to show the, the the same appetite that we did against St. Johnson. If we if we can do that, then you definitely think you'd fancy yourself against any of them over two legs. Um, and you know, obviously, I think it's a scrap between three clubs. You know, Hamilton, Kelly, and, and Ross County. But um, wherever you go or whoever you get, it's always going to be tough. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ruffy, um, the Glen Kamara situation rumbles on. Uh, Glenn Kamara's lawyer has released a statement slamming UEFA for their tokenism. Uh, Andre Kajela has been provisionally suspended for one match as UEFA begins disciplinary proceedings against him after he was accused of racially abusing Rangers player Glenn Kamara. Kajela will not be allowed to play the, Europe, uh, the Europa League match against Arsenal, which also means that Police Scotland will not be able to question him on Thursday with regards to their criminal investigation against him. Um, and he goes on to say this one match ban does little to instill confidence in UEFA being serious about stamping out racism and they must take robust action going forward. The defence put forward by Slavia Prague can only be described as incredible or fantasy. Uh, a one-match ban will make no difference whatsoever to Kajela or Slavia Prague. A one-game suspension spikes off tokenism and gives little confidence to black players who face such vile abuse. The overwhelming evidence against Kajela means UEFA must take immediate action to punish him robustly for the crime he is accused of. I, I wonder, Amar Anwar is clearly going to back his player on this, which is Glenn Kamara. We've all had our say um, on what we know, what we've seen and what we've looked at the player and his background, Rocky, but... I don't know if that's helpful, helpful from the lawyer because you have to wait until UEFA determine all the evidence and then come to a decision. This is what I would call just cranking up the pressure on it and boxing them into a, a corner on this one. Yeah, UEFA is not going to be bullied by anybody. UEFA are going to do what they do. You know, they all wait a while and then they wait till things calm down a wee bit and then they have you know, a, a, a committee meeting, then they decide, they have all the evidence out there and they'll look at it. And I'm sure if he, if he's found guilty, he's going to get more than one game. He's going to get a, possibly a whole year or whatever, you know. So I, I don't think Rangers should be worrying about anything. If Rangers are sure 100% that that's what happened, then just wait and bide your time, you know, and you'll get what you want, you know. And uh, I, I don't think you ever can dodge this at all. So... Uh, let them go on with it, and let and let's let's see what and when it comes out, and and, and hopefully it is proven, and uh, it gets a severe ban. And of course, the counter um, claim from Slavia Prague on this, Charlie, it casts aspersions on Glenn Kamara, you know, for serious <laughs> assault, which could carry a five-game ban. I must admit, if a player was guilty of racist abuse or sectarian abuse, you would have to, you could understand why Glenn Kamara would have to be dragged off a player. Um, I'm surprised that, you know, the, the, that he was so calm. And at the Peter, I said it weeks ago that this Cadella wouldn't turn up at Arsenal. Um, and that's why I felt that the police had to go over to the, to the Czech Republic to, to, to get a statement and make sure and, and go and get it because it was easy. It was easy. If he never got this one match ban, you know, it would have been easier for Slavia just to leave him at home and have no dealings with the police. The police should have went over there. Um, on, on the following week to, to question him, to get his answer and his, what he, what was said and things like that. But the Glenn Kamara thing, there's more about Glenn Kamara getting a five-game ban than what this lad's going to get for racially abusing him. It's disgusting. And we need to get it sorted as quick as possible. And 
the right action has to be taken. To ban him for one game is is ridiculous. And like you said, you know, if if you know Glenn Kamara, you know, in the tunnel did punch or whatever he done, you know, he was in given every given right to with with what supposedly was said. So we just hope that um, it's dealt with in the right way, and then UEFA, you know, get to the bottom of this and, and deal with it properly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as far as the other burning issue in Scotland at the moment, Tam, uh, will he, won't he, is he coming, is he not, when's he going to be unveiled? Um, of course, uh, now what we've got to with Eddie Howe is a situation where Eddie Howe wants to bring Josh King to Celtic as his first signing. Yeah. I mean, I am surprised. You won't remember this guy's name, but Ruffy will, Tom. I'm surprised Celtic haven't been linked with signing Ted McDougall from Bournemouth from the 1970s as well. Um, they'll just put two and two together and link everybody in their granny now. Yeah, listen, it's just, it's just press, isn't it? It's just a try to sell papers and and, and put articles out there. I don't think anybody's really got a clue what's going on. I think there's obviously been a little bit of a sniff that Celtic were speaking to, to how, but I think it's been kept under under wraps for a long time. And I think Dermot Desmond and Dominic Mackay will do it behind the scenes. I mean, it's ready to be announced, it'll be announced, and people are just speculating now. Not only have you not got a manager in, but you're now get, you're linked to a striker. The manager's not even at the club yet. You know, he's going to sign him. You know, it's ludicrous. And uh, But listen, it gets fans excited. Get them reading articles and clicking, and I suppose that's that's what it's all about. But you know, I, I think that I think that Desmond and, and Mackay will, will will get it done, whether it's Howe or someone else. And maybe Eddie Howe's kind of want to play Celtic, you know, against other teams to try and get a Premiership move. That's another side that that you, you maybe look at. You know, you're like see a Crystal Palaces and your Newcastle. Maybe he's wanted to stay down the road, and he knows if he's linked to Celtic, you'll get maybe they'll pull the trigger quicker on their manager, or uh, you'll get more money down there. So. Listen, it's all conjecture at the minute. Nobody knows. And uh, I think that's why the press are just scrambling about for stories. I'll tell you one thing, though, um, Charlie. They better have the old T's crossed and the I's dotted on this one because if suddenly there's an 11th hour change of heart, boy, they're going to have to be scrambling about looking for someone, aren't they? Yeah, no, I think... Like you say, you think it's done. And I, I believe that it will be wrapped up in, and I just don't think they want anything to derail you know, Celtic season at the moment by announcing the new manager. I think it will add pressure to everybody else. Um, the Josh King thing, if you if you go by with what he was asking for a salary in January for a move, then Celtic, they, they probably have to have deep, deep, deep pockets. You know, um, he was asking for big numbers in the, in the January window I, I was hearing. So I don't think Celtic could sign him. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what goes on. But if it is Eddie Howe, like I said before, I think it'll be a... a a good decision, um, but you know, is Eddie Howe going to be allowed to bring in his own people? You know, we're reading in the papers every day he wants to bring Richard Hughes in. I've heard other names linked, um, so now it'll be interesting to see. But if it is Eddie Howe, I would believe that the deal is already wrapped up, signed, and they're just waiting on the right time to announce it. Yeah, the other aspect of this, Ruffy, which any manager uh, coming in will realise is we're talking about the lone players who'll go back. We're talking about the players who aren't good enough to play for Celtic. He'll want to try and empty them. We're talking about players who want to leave Celtic will be offloaded as well. Let's not forget, Ruffy, there are a few lone players that Celtic have out in loan who are coming back that are simply not good enough as well. He'll have to deal with them. Yeah, if we think it's going to be Eddie Howe, and Eddie Howe is as good as what everybody is saying he is, he'll be going through that list as we speak if he thinks he's going to take the job. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, he'll be looking for advice from certain people. You know, obviously he hasn't seen a lot of the Celtic games this year or the Celtic players that we're talking about. So he'll have to be pointed in the right direction with some of them. Uh, but the sooner he does it, the better. If it is him, it's coming in. But you're right. There's an awful lot of players, you know, that need to go out the door. And with the present day, is, there's a lot of these players on very, very good wages. So the problem will be, we'll be getting them out the door. Uh, and a lot of them will tend to maybe sit tight. So it's going to be a huff, an awful lot of manoeuvre and a lot of, a lot of lost money to, to pay people to leave. 
Yeah, um, the one thing that we have been hearing about on a regular basis, uh, Tam, uh, various clubs releasing their financial figures and showing the true pain of COVID for the last 12 months. Hibs, the latest now, uh, with an AGM to explain to their fans the financial situation. Ron Gordon's been speaking uh, about the need to try and balance the books, uh, and he mentioned that it could be one, possibly two players on the way out. Yes, um, I, I think that maybe one or I, I don't I don't anticipate that more than one, perhaps at, at the outside too, but but I think one perhaps could could have an opportunity to move this summer. You know, I, I don't think we should undersell our you know our, our players. I mean, they, you know, Josh is a great player, and and, and clubs are, should be willing to pay. I mean, nobody's trying to be. We, we're trying to be reasonable, but we don't want to under under sell our assets. You know, as a club. So, Josh Doig, linked with Leicester City, Ryan Porteous, Kevin Nisbet, there are three options there that could maybe go a long way to trying to bridge that loss <laughs> over the last 12 months, Tom. Yeah, listen, I think that, as Ron said there, I think that one or two will possibly go in the summer. I think that Hibs were brave in the window there. They've seen a great opportunity for Hibs to, to finish third this season. And, uh, and get into Europe next season, and that will bring financial rewards as well. So I think that, yeah, Josh Doig, listen, he's been outstanding this season. And I'm, I'm not surprised that there's big clubs looking at Josh Doig because you know, since he's came into the team pre-season, he's been outstanding. And, you know, big clubs are getting linked to him. Leicester City, Man City, you know, clubs, Liverpool down the road. So, listen, he's he's obviously a big asset and Hibs could be looking to cash in on him. Kevin Nisbet as well, knock back a big number for him. In January, will Birmingham come back in in the summer? Ryan Portis has been playing really well. Um, I feel as if he's got his head screwed back on again. Um, he's been excellent the last few games. So I think it, will, it remains to be seen how many they'll sell. But I think you've got to, every club out with you know, every club in this pandemic has got to sell players to balance the books. And uh, and obviously Hibs have brought in a, in, a, in a top production team as well uh, for Hibs TV. You've got to pay for as well. So listen, there's, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that you've got to pay for. <laughs> there was just a there was just a pause there. He's, hey, Ruffy, he said it was such a straight face as well, didn't he? You know, big bucks. The thing is, he's Tam's crippling the club, isn't he? I don't know why. You know, I just don't know. Why. Is there another production team we don't know about? <laughs> I don't understand why these why these Premier Clubs are having to get rid of players. They've been offered a £1.6 million loan that doesn't have to get paid back for 20 years. You know, I'd love to know how many of them have bought into that and how many have taken that option up because if you that's an awful lot of money, you know, and I think supporters will be going, look, hey, wait a wee minute. I know we've lost money in the pandemic, but... Uh, Surely that's going to help us through the, 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 the troubled times. So I'd love to see the figures that they're talking about. Can employees get that one as well? Point, uh, 1.6 million is, a lot, is not a lot of money when you consider the full year, though, roughly. I'm sure a, a number of clubs, Charlie, have all bought into that already. But that's just a but, drop in the ocean. Absolutely. And I, you know, if, I, don't think if, if you, I don't think the clubs would want to take the loan if they've got assets of selling the, football, uh, the, player, the players. If I was if I was um, Leicester and I'm going to buy Josh Doig, you know they probably put him back on loan to Hibs to go and gain experience. He's 18 years of age. Is he going to go straight into the Leicester team? No. Is he going to be in the backup? He might be a backup, but part of the, the deal might be can we have him back on loan for another year to gain experience? So I, I think that that that's a, a good viable option than instead of taking a loan for 1.6 million because you've always got that debt hanging over your head. Eh? At some point you've got to pay it back. So there's no point in taking it if you if you don't have to if you're not struggling that bad. If you could sell a player and you can get the money in, then why not? Um, so listen, there'll be one or two going at the door at Hibs, and um, you know they'll, they'll do well at the three players. Um, so you know it'll be interesting to see if they can keep hold of of any of them. But I would expect them to sell at least two of the three. 
Yeah, and who are we to um, claim to know uh, the uh, real in-depth analysis of financial situation and whether it's beneficial to take the loan or not? There will be reasons behind some people opting for it, some uh, deciding against it. But my personal opinion is 1.6 million is just a, uh, you know, the tip of the iceberg of the pain that a lot of clubs have been feeling over the last year. But you're right, Ruffy, some might see it as a, a viable option just to get them over this difficult period until we eventually all get out of it. One thing's for certain though, Tom, even if he come back on loan, the influence of Lewis Stevenson for me on Josh Doig has been invaluable. Yeah, it has. Uh, I think that he couldn't have had a better mentor in his position. You know, Lewis Stevenson is a Hibs legend. He's the only, only person that's won the League Cup in the Scottish Cup. Uh, so he's, he's a Hibs legend and he's still a great professional. He can still play. But listen, he's been out of the team. Josh Doyle's come in and Stevenson stepped in a few times when Josh has dropped off and had a, a little bit of a dip. Uh, Stevenson's come in and done well, but Josh Doyle has, has nailed that position down now and I'm sure he's getting a lot of help from, from Lewis Stevenson, who's always been a, a great player. Not only a great player, but a great person, a great pro. He's not going to be sticking a knife into Josh Doyle. He's going to be trying to help him and uh, I think that's invaluable, it helps. Yeah, I seem to remember one legend... Uh... Tam, who had actually won a couple of League Cups and then won a Scottish Cup and a Premier League title. And he was a Hibs legend. I wonder if you know his name. No. Nope. No. Nope. Ruffy? Give me it again. What has he won? He'd won two, I think he'd won two League Cups with Hibs and then won a, 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 a Scottish Cup and a, a Premier League title as well. I'll take a guess, uh, Pat Stanton. Yes, yes, absolutely. Obviously um, not with Hibs. He left Hibs and Jock Steen signed him for a year. And in 1976-77, he just strolled in as a sweeper and had the cigars out listening to the Hamlet theme. It was absolutely magnificent. Won the Scottish Cup and the league title with him, Tom. Just to give you a wee bit of historical no, uh, background to it all. He's a, he's, a, he's a fantastic guy. I've done the Hibs TV with him a, a couple of months ago. What a humble guy for what he's achieved and whatever. Just a, a lovely, yeah. lovely guy. Tell you one thing, Tom, if you get a chance, have a look at the pictures of him when he was at his peak. Um, he looked mm. as if he could have been an Italian movie star. Um, he was unbelievable. He was like he was like Alan Russell, only better looking. <laughs> 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 um, it's the highest compliment I can pay, Pat Stanton. Um, listen, Leanne Dempster has gone from the club for quite a, a fair bit of time. Ron Gordon has enlightened uh, many a hippie that the new chief executive should be here in the next month. I would say we're in the final stages of our um, of our search, um, and I, I would I don't want to predict anything, but I would think that sometime within the next thirty days we we should be able to make an appointment. Um, but you know, it, it, we're still interviewing, and uh, although we've we've already gone through, we have a terrific number of applicants, uh, over over a hundred applicants and interested parties. Wow, I was just, hundred applicants. I just wonder, why, applicants, I just wonder <laughs> why you keep them hanging on, Tom. <laughs> why, are you, why are you making them wait thirty days? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I you you, you, you've, is is it in? Have you got your application in? Heavens are good in the tubes if I was looking after their money. <laughs> <didn't know> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be fair, though, it, it is, it is um, an important job, uh, Charlie. Uh, sometimes if you get somebody uh, dynamic, if you get somebody who really works their socks off, I mean, Leanne Dempster uh, typifies that, but there's a, there's a real business acumen to it that's required to go out there, be aggressive, and really get behind the brand. And Hibbs' brand, for me, is strong at the moment. Yeah, no, I know somebody's got that was in, is in was in for it, and um, they were saying to me it's a, it's a good club, it's in good position, and um, you know it's it's a big football club, eh? it's so it's going to entice sponsors, and I think Leanne done an excellent job there, um, left in a good footing, and whoever goes in there, I'll, I'll have to you know have to do well to to keep it going because over the years they've sold players and they've you know they've produced players and for good money, so. You know, I say it's a good opportunity for whoever goes in there. 
Yeah, and, and for me, Tom, the one thing that really is exciting about next season, of course, everybody will talk about Steven Gerrard's Rangers and whoever Celtic eventually uh, decide that they're going to unveil in the next week or two. Um, but the, the Hibs situation uh, and Aberdeen, I mean, Aberdeen, I think, is an exciting one because you're suddenly looking now and you're saying to yourself, they look as if they've got the bit between their teeth. Certainly shown, I think they've certainly shown ambition We're getting Stephen Glass, Alan Russell and Scott Browning. You know, if I was an Aberdeen fan, I'd be really excited by that. You know, they've obviously had Derek McInnes for a number of years. I think they were fed up with Derek McInnes, to be honest, and now they've got a, you know, a fresh canvas to go and, and, and try and do something different. And I, I know Stephen Glass is a very, very attacking coach. They've got the England striker coach in. So you're thinking, surely Aberdeen will be better to watch next season and they'll score more goals. And... I think that's what all the Aberdeen fans want up there. They want to see an exciting team, an exciting brand of football and go and attacking teams, which they haven't probably done over the last few years. So we'll wait and see. But I still, I would still, you know, Hibs as well. Depends who they keep. You know, if they can keep Nisbet and keep Portis, maybe sell Josh Doig, I don't know. But a bit exciting next season to see how those two clubs do and see if they can get closer to Celtic and Rangers than they, than they have done this season. Yeah, I, I would love to see certain clubs with an attitude, Ruffy, with managers with an attitude that want to have a right go um, and not play this, what I call, uh, I think, I think unfortunately, the Premiership in Scotland breeds a fear football. It's almost as if before you kick the ball, you're thinking, how can I avoid going down? Yeah, well, it's not until you're at a club that is down at the bottom, not just for a wee while, but for a long while, you know, when you're the likes of Hamilton and Ross County and you're down second bottom, the bottom, second bottom, third bottom for, for nearly the whole season, that, that's not a healthy position as a player to be in. The pressure that's on you week in, week out. And I think that's why we all would hope that they'd make it a 16 league or something like that to give these teams a bit of breathing space. Uh, because obviously, you know, if you're at a club that is, is like that, it's not a great atmosphere in the dressing room Monday to Friday and then you're, you go into the game on the Saturday and all the pressure's piled on you. It's, it's a hard one to, 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 to get into your head. And you know all the work that goes behind these clubs, the, the Hamiltons and the Ross Counties now Monday to Friday. Uh, and it's a tough one, you know, then men mentally as well, you know, and that's why we think if, if it was 16, there'd be more young players coming in and more of them would get a chance if they were maybe sitting further up the league. Yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from. I think it's the toughest part of it, Charlie, because not only are you faced with the point where you're trying to avoid being bottom, which is relegated of the 12 teams that are there, but then the, the second bottom team knows what's coming as far as the hungry teams with the momentum at the, the top end of the championship. And I'm looking at it right now. Hamilton, 27 points. Killy, 28. Ross County, 29. I think Motherwell are too far away now. It's it's it's, it's John Hughes, Tommy Wright and, and, and Brian Rice. And, and on the evidence of what you've witnessed over the last week, you can see the pressure is mounting. Brian Rice, um, clearly, just he just exploded the other day there. Yeah, I think it was just, uh, you know, it was a lot of frustration with, with what Chipper had said and you know, I watched Ross County on Friday night against Inverness, and Inverness were far the better team. Um, so it's it's a worry for these three teams. I just think that Kilmarnock will have enough with Kyle Lafferty in their team. He'll score them enough goals to to keep them up. So it's between <coughs> Hamilton and Ross County if, um, for for who gets into the playoff or and who comes down. So it's I think all the clubs. You know, listen. There's four clubs I think in Scotland that could could guarantee that they're not going to get relegated. You know, Rangers, Celtic. Aberdeen and and um, and Hibs, the rest, they're every season hoping that they don't have a free for all and they can end up in the bottom half or or end up in that relegation zone. So it's it is tough um, living in that fear. And like you say, I would like to see some managers, like you said, have a bit more persona about them and be more confident about you know we can attack this. And it's nice to see Stephen Glass coming out and saying, do you know what? We're actually going to try and go to Glasgow and get a result, try and win football matches. Is it going to be difficult? Absolutely. Um, you know, that's why on a consistent basis, Rangers and Celtic, because they've got the best players, they've got the biggest budgets and, and the best players are always consistently playing well. So they've got to try and do that on a, on a one-off basis against the Rangers and Celtic. But it's going to be tough. And um, you know, I fear for, for you know, Hamilton and, and Ross County uh, come the end of the season. 
It's the first time, actually, I think, in nine seasons uh, that Ruffy and I haven't predicted Hamilton Ackies. Uh, and look at the Ackies, they're, they're rock bottom, Tam. Uh, we we picked yeah. Ross County, no surprise, Ruffy picking Ross County, but I, I picked Ross County and I thought Yogi was going to get some kind of, I don't know, boost, you know, from taking over and putting his ideas in place. It hasn't quite happened the way I thought it was going to happen and and I agree with Charlie. I think Kelly might just have enough to scrape away into that tenth position. Massive game on Saturday. Kilmarnock against Ross oh. County down at Rugby Park. Uh, listen, I think if Kilmarnock can win that, I think they go a long, long way. But I don't think Kilmarnock are out it yet. I think if Ross County can turn go down there and get a result, then Kilmarnock are back are, are right back in it again. So listen, it's going to be very tight and listen, I've been down there myself with a few different clubs and when it comes to the bottom six, these are all huge games, six pointers. You know, I, I, I think I've probably told you before, I can remember when I was at Dundee and uh, the game before the split, we had beat them firmly to go nine points clear of Livingston at the bottom. And we only picked up two points from the from the bottom six games and we got relegated in the last game of the season. So a lot of people are saying Motherwell, you know, Motherwell need a win. If Motherwell don't get any points, they could get relegated, they need a win. So I wouldn't just write them off just right. Yeah, I've been, been safe. So. But I'd agree that it's, it's for me, Hamilton Ackies are going to get relegated. I, th- I said it at the start of the season and uh, nothing has changed my mind. And I think Ross County, I agree with Charlie, Ross County will be second bottom. And you'd fancy an Inverness or a Dundee or maybe a Wraith to beat Ross County. You would this season because I don't think the teams at the bottom of the Premiership are, are that good this year. Uh, okay, I know what you're like. You, you obviously want to try and you know mention the probability situation, but we're paid to to give opinions. I, I can't see Motherwell getting relegated. I just can't see it. I just think they've got. I just think they've got too a, much there. Neither is I know you. St- yeah, uh, they're not going to get relegated. There you are. I'll stick my neck out. Motherwell are not getting right. relegated. I think. I think Rather. that. I no, Motherwell won't get relegated. I think that team in the tenth place. You know if. You know, like you say in the Premier League, if they are losing games and whoever comes up through the playoffs in the Championship and are winning football matches, the confidence is totally different. Eh? They're low in confidence and whoever's come up from the Championship are high in confidence. It means it's, you know, it's going to be a massive game and let's say it's whoever it gets, whoever gets there will be, I think they'll be happy if they can get one of the three that are there and, Charlie, and, and they'd have a right chance. The only thing is that the, the team coming up in the playoffs, has not got a great record against the Premiership teams. Off no, the top there's of no, head, that's the thing. I can, Hamilton? I can only think of Hamilton against Hibs and Livingston. Yeah. I think that's only two off the top of my head, maybe in the last 10 years, that have come up and, and beat the Premiership team. So I think it's, it, it's harder because, as you said, if you finish third or fourth in the Championship, you've got six games, high intensity mm-hmm. games within a short period of time. And the Premier League side are sitting there rested with two games. So. It's difficult, and I think that's why Charlie is massive for Dundee to finish second. Yeah, yeah Tom, just just a, a great a great insight because you've been there, and I'm not in any way trying to highlight the fact that you were with clubs who were who were battling against relegation. But I think it's good that um, you give us um, an insight into the mentality of the players because you looked as if he were absolutely coasting it, and then suddenly. You know, as you say, you only manage two points. What happens with the players? What what goes wrong? What what are the pressures that these players at Ross County, Kelly and Hamilton will be feeling that nobody else can really touch touch on? It's massive, Peter, the pressure. I mean, you look at tea ladies and, and young boys, YTSs and people in the office, and you feel that you feel that, that strain and that stress of having to keep the club up. And you go out in the park, you know, these games are going to be so, so tight. And uh, we lost a couple. I think we played Dundee United about three games to go, and we, we lost a late go- a late goal, and they won two one. Um, so it's all six pointers down here, Peter. Particularly between the bottom three, when these these head to head games, you, you can't get beat. You know, if you can get a draw, fine, but you can't lose these head to head games. And we lost, I think, three of them. With the teams running about us, and uh, you feel the pressure. And you know, hopefully, it might come down to the last game of the season. And we had to go to Livingston when I was at Dundee and win. And we drew and I had to post in the last minute of the injury time to, to keep us up. And a lot of Dundee fans will still remember that. So the, the pain that you go through when you get relegated is, is incredible because it's not just you and your own career. But you look and you see staff getting laid off and other players, young boys getting released because there's no funds, no budget. And you, you feel responsible for that. So I, I don't, 
listen, I, 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 these guys are, are, are under pressure and they've got to try and keep the club in division. Yeah, it's funny you saying that, Tam. I remember, Ruffy, um, you know, they talk about David Beckham when he kicked out at, to Diego Simone uh, and they were, you know, they were effigies of David Beckham. He was vilified. Um, I remember you and I getting up to Dundee to do an after dinner and there was a dartboard with, with Tam's face all over it and people were just throwing darts <laughs> at it. They just couldn't couldn't forgive him for just killing Dundee, hitting the post when the goal was gaping, Ruffy. Yeah. Yeah, and now, now we know who the person was that was trying to f jump off the Tay Bridge, you know, and the police obviously <laughs> stopped him, so that's coming out and all now, so I think you took that too far, but uh, you just have yeah. to move on, Tom. Should you have scored, Tom? Was it easy? Was it an easy chance? No, 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 no. No? It was, uh, it was, no. It was the 97th minute, and it was it was one each, and we were shooting, I'll never forget it, we were shooting into Dundee fans, there was 5,000 Dundee fans behind the goal. On I remember it. Uh, and I, I cut across from the right hand side and I had a shot from about 20 yards on my left foot and my left foot was horrific but I just thought I'd have a pop and I actually thought it no bad and it trundled and it hit the inside of the post and rolled into Roddy McKenzie's hands and then the referee blew the whistle. I'll never forget it. And we get relegated oh. there on, the, on the spot we're relegated and we, we lost our eight grand bonus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, me, and, uh, <laughs> me, and, me and Peter, me and Peter played tennis down at David Lloyd uh, once a week and Big Roddy just never stops talking about that. Uh, Big Roddy's yeah. a fitness coach. He's living as Big Roddy, does he? Uh, yeah, he's he a fitness coach, and uh, that, that, he just he's asking for you. you know? Yeah, absolutely. He, and he always drives in in his eight grand car. I mean, it's incredible. <laughs> um, I think listen, we're on the um, same. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it, listen, it's high stakes and the pressure. It was just a, interesting to get an insight from you, Tam, into the type of pressure the players are under, not just personally. The whole club, as you've just mentioned there, and I think that's something the next five games is going to be intense and you only have to look at Brian Rice to see what's happening. But can I add to that on the other side? If you look at us as Dundee as a football club now, if we got up, what it would do to the city? Oh, you know, You know, both teams in the Premier League, the pandemic's just been Rangers and Celtic, Aberdeen, Hearts, Hibs coming to town. The pubs, the economy would be booming, do you know what I mean? So that would then give us a lift. So we we must be thinking, as a group of players now thinking, you know, we could change, not change lives, but we could change the whole city as a as a, as a as a perception of that, you know, it could give the whole place a boost. You know, lads are obviously going to get an increase in salary, but I've been on, the, let's say, a relegation where the first thing you think about is, you know, the people that are going to lose their jobs, and that's the biggest thing, especially, you know, for Hearts getting relegated and obviously now they had a fantastic owner and a group of fans that backed the supporters so they never really had that hit but for instance if you look at a, you know Hamilton or a, or, or a Ross County coming down you know it doesn't matter how much money Roy McGregor's got you know there'll be people losing their jobs and things like that so it's, it's a big worry and even like Kilmarnock so it's, it's not a nice place to be and um, you know it's, uh, it, it, it does weigh down on the players I'll tell you that especially if you're in the relegation Peter. zone yeah. yeah, I think obviously for, D for Dundee as well, you'd have massive derbies against Dundee United and St Johnson next season if Dundee can yeah. get up. Tom, Tom, I don't want to go back over old ground, but it's I'm almost certain we are on April the seventh, and I think it was maybe in the next month the ultimate skullduggery from a group of greedy chairmen, greedy chief executives, moronic people in the Scottish uh, professional football league had a chance to change our game for the better and they decided self-interest was the way ahead and I look at Hearts, Wraith Rovers, Dundee and Inverness could all be in a 16-team league. You'd have a Highland derby, you'd have an Edinburgh derby, you'd have a Dundee derby, you'd have a Glasgow derby. It would not get any better than that. It doesn't take a scientist, a Philadelphia lawyer, a normal, perfectly fair-thinking football fan to think what a league that would be. What a league with all those crowds going to those derbies, Tam. That's the opportunity we had and we we yeah. blew it because of greed and self-interest only a year ago, Listen. Tam. Yeah. So that's we, we spoke Peter, about it on the show, that, didn't we? That's why, I, that's why Anne Budge came out and said, watch what you vote for because it could be you and let, if any of these teams at the bottom come down, they're down a million pound 
immediately coming out of that Premiership. And these clubs, although obviously the Ross County boys got a few bob, a lot of them would survive. You, you automatically are down a million pounds financially, and that's without taking any games. You lose all yeah. your European money, your hand out, uh, Rangers and Celtic doing well in Europe. You lose your 600,000 parachute payment. It is disastrous, and that's why they don't vote for it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, um, you know, until somebody, you know, gets our league by the throat and, and, and tells people how to actually um, build something, it might take an outsider to actually take it forward. Listen, this is a, this is a, it's a country Peter. still without a major sponsor for the, the the main the main league. We can't even get money in, in sponsorship can, because they're too busy can, backstabbing can, each other. Can you imagine Inverness v Dundee in the playoffs, the WhatsApp derby? Yeah, that would that's be a exactly. <laughs> by the way, that oh, that is like the match, that by derby. Way. That's the derby, the WhatsApp it derby. It is. Tom, you nailed it. That's what we'll call it, the WhatsApp derby. Um, listen, uh, to last night, um, oh, Liverpool, absolutely murder. Um, I don't know, you, Ruffy, which one did you watch? Did you watch Man City or did you watch Liverpool? I watched the Liverpool game. Uh, I, I thought that goal was going to be a lifeline, but... Can they can they win two nothing at home? It's a big ask, and I, I think Real Madrid will score at, at Liverpool, and that'll be it. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, and I'll tell you, Charlie, what about pressure now? Um, because Man City um, two one is slender, and they're going to have to go out. Here's Pep Guardiola uh, telling everyone what they're going to do when they go to Germany. And now we are going to Dortmund to absolutely not defend. We're going to just our high pressing. We're going to just our build up. We're going to just our um, control the, his runners. And uh, yeah, we are going to try to play 90 minutes to try to reach semi-final. Pressure, Charlie. There's pressure at that end. They've only spent a billion. Yeah, and uh, they're chasing the golden nugget into winning that Champions League. I think big news getting De Bruyne on another extra two years contract is huge for them. Um, I'd fancy them to beat Dortmund in Dortmund. I just think they're that good. Um, and I think they will win the Champions League this year. So, you know, I don't think Pep's scared of Dortmund. I think he'll go and attack. Um, you know, I was surprised to see Sterling left out. But, you know, the lads that keep coming in from Man City are doing the job, aren't they? You know, Mares, Foden is just been phenomenal. De Bruyne is just um, amazing. So, no, it'll be interesting to see, but um, I still think they can go there and get a result. And I think the Liverpool one is, you know, it's a huge blow for them to, to lose 3-1 away in Madrid. Um, but can they do it? You can never rule it out, can you? So, I, I, I wouldn't do it unless, you know, wait and see what happens in the second leg. Yeah, it needs a, it needs a quick Trent Alexander uh, corner to Origi. Um, to, to haul them back into it. Um, as far as Man City, I'll tell you one thing, Tom. Talk about VAR and whether it ever comes up here. It doesn't seem to make a blind bit of difference in Europe. How that Borussia Dortmund goal was rolled off, I would never know. It's never a foul. You know, it's just the boys get to be on and he's, the boys went in and put his foot in and won it. Never a foul. And that's how I hate VAR. I hate watching the games with VAR. I really do. It just puts me off. I, w I actually watched the Man City game. Yeah, but that, that really annoyed me, that decision. Cause it should have been a goal for Dortmund. And I was quite impressed with Dortmund. I thought Man City would have yeah. studied them. Dortmund have been struggling in Germany this season, but Dortmund played well, pressed Man City high and, and had a few opportunities. And obviously Foden gets a goal late on, so I think that, that ties still alive. But I think Man City have got enough quality to go over there and, and get a result and get through. Yeah, OK. Um, that, we've got your call on that. Just before we go, guys, where are you watching tonight? I don't know. If any of you put your hand up and say you're watching Porto Chelsea, fair play to you, because I won't be roughy. Um, Bayern Munich PSG has got 5-4 written all over it. Yeah, I'll be supporting my team tonight. Uh, I hope we can do it. Uh, they've, let me down. they've let me down in previous seasons, but... Uh, I, I just you must be getting a bung up on the sheiks. <laughs> the, the, the big players are, are beginning to turn PSG it on. Fan, so, my I'm, God. Oh, come on. The Bayern are just they're too predictable for me. So, a bit of flair. We yeah. want a bit of flair uh, in the finals. Yeah, I love that line, Charlie. Bayern are just too predictable. They just keep winning. Uh, win every week, don't they? It's, um, but Lewandowski's out and he injured. A couple of injuries. So, it's, um, you'd still expect Bayern to win at mm. home, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, you going Bayern to win at home? 
Yeah, I, I think Bayern I'm will win. Bayern. Yeah, yeah, I'll go Bayern to win. What about you, Tom? Oh, Lewandowski out. I think that'll be a score draw. Yeah, Rafi. Two one PSG. Right, there you are. That, that, that moment of it was Ruffy's head actually going around there giving you uh, time to answer the question. I'm going to go a draw for Chelsea against Porto. Charlie? I think Chelsea will win 2-0. Tom? I think Porto will beat them. I fancy Porto strongly. 2-1 to Porto. Oh. Yeah, Ruffy? 2 each. I'm going to go 2 each in this two one. Each. Okay, um, listen, just a wee bit of news just for your interest. Always good to get a newsy point on it. I'm not in any way peeved that he's decided to go and do it um, with a, a, an English news company. That just seems to be par for the course these days. Don't give it to anybody who's in the Scottish media. Um, Glenn Kamara will be um, doing an interview for ITV News at 6.30. So it's going to be one of those uh, ones where I, I think... All of us are, 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 are backing the boy. Um, hopefully truth prevails. If indeed he was abused, then hopefully there will be a hefty ban. But at half past six on ITV News, it's certainly going to be worth watching Glenn Kamara talk about the situation that he faced in that game against Slavia Prague. We will debate that on tomorrow's show. That is for certain. Um, thanks to you. Don't forget you can share uh, the stream. You can follow us. You can also uh, jump out of the picture and get yourself a wee drink and leave before we say cheerio. Um, and you can... <laughs> <laughs> you get caught there, boy. -o. You get caught. You're unbelievable. There you are. And that's uh, just uh, some of the uh, Lance Armstrong just... juices drinking there. Yeah, absolutely. He'll drink anything, Charlie, to get back into a game of five of sides. Um, anyway, apart from that, I played last uh, night, on Peter. YouTube. Did you get in? Did you get a game? I got in last night. Aye, I played last night. I was honking. Oh, it was terrible. What, <laughs> what, was, the, what, was, what was the standard oh, like? Decent standard. We get beat by six or something. Oh, I was minging. I ended up oh. going goal at the end. I was mugged up. Can you run? Wow. Oh, I've never been games. beaten by belt. six, Ruffy, in the fives. I've never been beaten by six, Ruffy, in the fives. I wonder what it's like. <laughs> oh, he's... Aye, aye, all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll see you, on the, see you on the fives, Tom. Let's see how good you are. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, uh, thanks to Tom, thanks to Charlie, thanks to Ruffy, and from myself, Peter Martin, thanks to you for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed.